Welcome to the Knowledge of Self Academy YouTube channel. Embark on a profound intellectual journey with us as we explore the intricate pathways of cognition, unraveling the fascinating connections between biases, beliefs, and emotional responses. Our channel serves as your gateway to self-discovery, navigating the complex terrain of the mind. Seamless transition from the original entitled Lecture 7, Introduction to the Knowledge of Self. January 11th of 2024. Original, Biases, Beliefs, and Emotional Response. Before immersing yourself in this advanced version, we encourage you to delve into the origins of our exploration. The original lecture lays the groundwork for comprehending the intricacies woven into our cognitive tapestry. Join us in uncovering the profound impact of biases on mental, physical, and financial well-being, and how they subtly shape the labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum. Smooth transition with the SAT entitled, L7 with Advanced SAT Trifecta of Physiological, Behavioral, and Cognitive Responses January 12, 2024. For a more gradual transition, we present in SAT version, less advanced but equally enlightening. This intermediate step allows you to absorb the nuances at your own pace, ensuring a comprehensive understanding of the topics explored in the original lecture. Nevertheless, welcome to the advanced version. Feel free to dive directly into this advanced literary tapestry. The choice is yours and we are excited to have you embark on this intellectual odyssey. Get ready to unravel the complexities of cognition, biases, and the intricate dance of emotional responses. Vocabulary enrichment awaits you. At the conclusion of this lecture, a valuable resource awaits, our curated list of vocabulary words. Each word is accompanied by sample sentences taken directly from this lesson, enhancing your comprehension of this advanced literary version. We believe that understanding the nuances of language is crucial to unlocking the depth of our explorations. A glimpse into the lecture content. In this exploration, we dissect biases ingrained through Pavlovian classical conditioning, shedding light on their impact on mental, physical, and financial well-being. The environment transforms into a crucible for these biases, influencing the circuitry of the cerebrum and shaping our thoughts. As you navigate the ethereal phenomenon of assimilated cognizance, be mindful of engaging with deleterious subjects that may evoke visceral responses. Expressions like disgusted, Angry, fearful, and shocked vividly describe these forces, manifesting as if adverse spirits dominate encounters with conditioned negativity. Indoctrinations, subtle machinations intricately interlace biases into our mental fabric, fostering negative predilections and convictions. This interplay may leave you feeling subjugated by maleficent forces, sparking turbulent emotional states characterized by dissonance. Resilience and adaptability become paramount in the pursuit of authentic objectives amid unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs. Principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness propel us toward goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. Embracing one's higher self aids in navigating adversities with equanimity. The transformative odyssey necessitates due significance to refining present life, incorporating meditation into the daily routine. Thank you for choosing the Knowledge of Self Academy as your intellectual guide. We are more than a channel, we are a community committed to fostering resilience, adaptability, and the pursuit of authentic objectives. Welcome to a journey of self-awareness and enrichment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell. 
Your engagement fuels our commitment to delivering insightful content on self-discovery and cognition. Lesson 7. With advanced literary words and terminologies. Introduction to the knowledge of self. Beyond indoctrination, a paradigm shift for emotional liberation. January 17, 2024. Salutations, Venerable Assembly, as we embark upon the illuminative odyssey of the erudition of Self Academy's Seventh Discourse. It is imperative to grasp that each discourse manifests in diverse iterations, wherein those adorned with the designations academic or academia encapsulate a lexicon of heightened sophistication. For a more seamless assimilation, it is judicious to commence with the G renditions, spanning from G8 to G12, or opt for those discourses denoted as original. Whether one finds oneself in the throes of academic pursuits, deeply entrenched within the labyrinthine realms of erudition, or merely harboring aspirations to embellish the lexicon, there exist adaptations finely attuned to the parlance of the sat replete with elucidations and exemplar sentences proffered in denouement. In our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning, owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets to unravel the intricacies of cognitive subjugation. Through an expedition into Pavlovian classical conditioning, we have elucidated the condits wherein individuals may find themselves ensnared within the labyrinth of cognition. Biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. Our environs metamorphose into fertile grounds for the inception and fortification of such biases. Effective vicissitudes stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. The labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum, sculpted through the crucible of doctrination, renders us amenable to the sway of our ruminations. Doctrination consciously diverts our focus outward, engendering a formidable impediment to sustaining internal cognizance. Consequently, we persist in obliviousness to the repercussions of extraneous stimuli upon our emotive states. The provenance of our ruminations becomes obfuscated, leaving us in quandary regarding their authenticity or whether they are mere byproducts of misguided doctrines about veracity. Upon construing acquired cognizance as adverse, an effusion of undesirable emotions ensues organically, resisting metamorphosis into sanguine ones. Subtle physiological metamorphoses during these automatized emotional rejoinders underscore the vulnerability to extrinsic influences wrought by indoctrinated biases. This ethereal phenomenon portends that our assimilated cognizance, whether derived from media or interpersonally transmitted founts, actively instill certain influences within our cognitive tapestry. Consequently, Engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response, akin to the arousal of latent forces within, rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. Expressions such as, disgusted, angry, fearful, and shocked, serve as poignant descriptors for these forces, spontaneously manifesting as if adverse spirits assume dominion when we contemplate or confront elements conditioned as negative. Indoctrination, in its subtle machinations, intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 
This, in turn, begets turbulent emotional states characterized by dissonance. The lexicon of emotions, enlisting terms such as disgust, anger, fear, shock, hate, lust, and more, attests to the internal schisms we grapple with, elucidated through antecedent discourse exploring unconditional stimulus, neutral stimulus, unconditional response, conditioned stimulus, and conditioned response. Regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. Confrontations with particular personages, occurrences, or entities that actuate the manifestation of our biases instigate automatic emotional responses concomitant with perceptible metamorphoses in physique, comportment, and cognition. The interplay of these constituents underscores the labyrinthine nexus of our conditioned rejoinders to the erudite apprehension of our environs. Individuals contending with persistent angst, for instance, may grapple with impediments when endeavoring self-reflection and partaking in meditation as a panacea for their emotional tumult. Despite navigating existence amidst an array of adverse emotions, most among us adept discharge quotidian responsibilities. Transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. Indoctrination, through its formative influence, fashions individuals to an extent where extraneous influences elicit corporeal, behavioral, and emotional anomalies. Daily confrontations disrupt our internal equipoise, and familiarity with these disruptions attenuates sensitivity, nurturing a conviction that tumultuous emotional vacillations constitute an innate facet of reality. In contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. Notwithstanding the imposition of indoctrination, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. These principles, steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences, proffer sagacious counsel, facilitating the circumvention of commonplace pitfalls and fostering a more efficacious pursuit of our loftiest aspirations. The embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. The allure inherent in treading this elevated path remains irresistibly compelling. However, as one embarks upon this transformative odyssey, it becomes imperative to accord due significance to and refine one's present life. The inherent evolution mandates the judicious incorporation of meditation into the fabric of daily routine. Our modus operandi in the grand theatre of existence mirrors the kaleidoscopic panorama of our indoctrinated worldview, giving rise to aberrations in the symphony of our corporeal, behavioral, and cognitive repertoire. Safeguarding against the deleterious emotional consequences arising from this ingrained perspective necessitates a paradigm shift in our operational dynamics. Though initially a formidable undertaking, it behoves us to sagaciously recognize and rectify the emotional wounds inflicted by the tenets of indoctrination, eschewing the perpetuation of ignorance concerning the gradual physiological and emotional erosion they insidiously sow within our sentient being.
The process of metamorphosing our behavioral patterns necessitates grappling with internal conflicts, as we contend with the arduous task of altering habits that have become entrenched in the very fabric of our being. Pragmatic practices such as meditation emerge as instrumental tools in refining the alchemy of our body's chemical responses and hormonal releases. Through this intricate dance of behavioral transmutation, we emancipate our volition from the constrictive clutches of emotions inculcated through the conduit of indoctrination. The veracity of our apprehension of reality crystallizes within the framework of deeply ingrained conceptualizations about what is deemed authentic and tangible. This perceptual lens, inextricably linked to our cognitive apparatus, exerts a profound influence on the automatisms inherent in our emotional responses. Specific linguistic constructs or adjectival nuances tethered to experimental events possess the remarkable capacity to evoke a kaleidoscope of nuanced emotional reactions, each accompanied by its intricate spectrum of physiological, behavioral, and cognitive oscillations, concomitant with biochemical reactions and hormonal releases. It becomes incumbent upon us to apprehend the mesmerizing effects enshrouded within the lexical fabric and ideational constructs that steer our navigation through the multifarious realms of our existence within this tangible reality, precipitating reflexive, automatic responses. The metaphorical analogy of indoctrination assuming the semblance of a process akin to zombification resonates particularly with those engaged in the introspective examination of their cognitive landscapes. The transition from the realm of unconscious, automatic behaviors and internally rooted processes transpires as a gradual endeavor, demanding a conscientious and delicate approach for optimal efficacy in this transcendental odyssey. To emancipate ourselves from the shackles of cognitive captivity mandates authentic experiences, eschewing precipitate endeavors. Our existence, far from a fortuitous occurrence, stands as the apotheosis of influences accrued through successive generations, shaping the very essence of our being. The presence of health and aptitude disparities from the inception of life may instigate contemplation regarding the agency of an unjust or flawed progenitor in orchestrating the intricacies of existence. Dismissing the notion that our fates are exclusively sculpted by individual deeds invokes scrutiny toward a creator harboring imperfections or exhibiting predilections. Life's intricacy defies facile explications, compelling a nuanced exploration of its convolutions and asymmetries. The celestial choreography of harmonious revolutions and the symbiotic interplay among sentient entities intimate the imperative need for a natural equilibrium for life's flourishing. It becomes discernible that our collective and individual choices may contribute to any extant disequilibrium in the tapestry of life. The concept of an inequitable or defective architect shaping life gains currency when disparities in health, aptitude, and economic circumstances manifest from the commencement of existence. Refuting the premise that our deeds in isolation determine the destinies of individuals and communities engenders contemplation regarding a creator characterized by imperfections or inclinations. Life's intricacies defy reductionist elucidations, necessitating a profound comprehension of its labyrinthine nature. The meticulous precision in the celestial ballet and the interdependence among living organisms underscore the indispensable requisite for a natural equipoise in the grand orchestration of life. Our choices, whether enacted collectively or individually, possess the potential to disrupt this equilibrium, thereby contributing to the observed disparities in the tableau of life. Communing with the higher self emerges as a catalyst for heightened cognizance, beseeching us to unveil imperfections woven into the fabric of our quotidian rituals. Our consciousness, 
a malleable substrate, is sculpted by indoctrinated dogma, intertwining emotions with aberrant hormonal secretions and biochemical reactions. The iterative enactment of indoctrinated behaviors sets the theatrical stage for cognitive subjugation, coercing actions to adhere to entrenched doctrines or risking emotional upheaval when deviating from inculcated credos. Operating from the elevated realm of the higher self necessitates a resolute exertion of one's volition, endowed with the fortitude to defy deeply ingrained automatic principles. The appellation, all power, may prove misleading, as possessing the volition to partake in specific endeavors might lack the requisite potency, hampered by sundry impediments such as health by vicissitude. Henceforth, the confluence of both volition and potency assumes an imperativeness in the pursuit of task consummation. A profound intellectual assimilation of these precepts kindles an ardent yearning for inner metamorphosis, nurturing the fortification of both volition and potency. The trajectory of righteousness entails the adoption of practices like the cultivation of salubrious habits, the espousal of a nutriment derived from whole foods, engagement in corporeal exercises, and the assurance of adequate repose a pivotal equilibrium indispensable for the sustenance of both volition and potency. Discerning that our volition is ensnared in erroneous conceptualizations propels us to scrutinize our autonomy of choice, especially when our comportments unfurl involuntarily. While the concession that acquired behaviors, whether enmeshed in cerebral subjugation or harmonized with the higher self's trajectory, tends to metamorphose into automatism, the merits of aligning with the higher self's trajectory are manifold. This encompasses the emancipation of our conduct from the straits of mental aberrations like anxiety and despondency. Guided by the higher self, we progressively liberate ourselves from cognitive subjugation, rendering ourselves impervious to automatic adverse reactions in circumstances that would typically incite predilections towards biases, ire, or trepidation. Stimuli not only wield the potency to elicit emotional irregularities, but also extend their sway across sundry facets of our existence. Indoctrination, surreptitiously imparting erroneous conceptualizations, covertly steers us towards emotional detriments that permeate both vocational and societal dynamics. This calculated indoctrination, aimed at cognitive subjugation, necessitates the subordination of our discernment faculty to a contrived actuality, circumscribing our choices within the confines of what has been instilled. Embedded predispositions within this doctrine dictate when adversities should be perceived as opportunities, unveiling the contingent nature underpinning our comportments and aspirations. We find ourselves predisposed to attribute our effective responses, ranging from apprehension and predilections to desires, to intrinsic attributes within objects, individuals, or circumstances, casting them as extrinsic forces arbitrating our reactions. This deeply ingrained perspective posits that these external constituents possess the potential to instigate psychological maladies within us merely through their existence. Consequently, the quandary arises in seamlessly cohabiting with objects, individuals, and scenarios that elicit undesirable emotions. To mitigate this, we frequently resort to the reorganization of external conditions, such as eschewing interaction with particular individuals, to assuage emotional disarray. The dearth of cognizance regarding these automatic responses, culminating in disorders, may impede the discernment of the exigency to reinstate internal equilibrium, obstructing the rectification of aberrant biochemical secretions and hormonal releases. Pavlov's paradigmatic classical conditioning, a foundational tenet in psychology, unfurls as a progression wherein a neutral stimulus, 
initially bereft of the capacity to evoke an automatic response, becomes imbued with said capability through recurrent association with a stimulus inherently precipitating such a response. In the archetypal instance, the resonance of a bell, initially inconsequential, consistently intertwines with the presentation of sustenance, a stimulus unconditional in its capacity to naturally induce salivation. As this correlation is perpetually fortified over time, the hitherto neutral stimulus, the resonating bell, metamorphoses into a conditioned stimulus. Consequently, individuals commence displaying the reflexive response of salivation solely in reaction to the bell, even in the absence of food. This acquired comportment illustrates how external stimuli wield the transformative influence in shaping involuntary reactions, thereby elucidating the quintessence of Pavlov's classical conditioning. In summation, Pavlov's classical conditioning accentuates the psychological postulate wherein a neutral stimulus acquires the aptitude to elicit a reflexive or automatic response through iterative associations. The erstwhile neutral stimulus, now christened a conditioned stimulus, accomplishes the noteworthy feat of autonomously instigating the acquired response, furnishing a vivid portrayal of behavioral malleability through associative erudition. In the paradigm of Pavlovian classical conditioning, a neutral stimulus, exemplified by the resonating tones of a bell in the first instance, undergoes a metamorphosis through recurrent pairings with an unconditioned stimulus, such as sustenance. The unconditioned stimulus inherently precipitates a reflexive response, as observed in dogs through salivation. Via the persistent correlation of the bell's auditory resonance with the introduction of sustenance, the canine comprehends the linkage between the bell and the reflexive response, culminating in the auditory stimulus autonomously attaining the status of a conditioned stimulus. This conditioned stimulus now autonomously provokes the erudite response of salivation, delineating the acquisition of the association between the bell's sound and the automatic reaction. A congruent exemplification unfolds in the second scenario, where Pavlovian classical conditioning is illustrated by an individual correlating fear with a specific auditory stimulus, akin to a song amid thunderstorms. Initially, the cacophonous reverberations characteristic of thunderstorms elicit an unconditioned response of fear. Through the systematic pairing of the musical composition with the tumultuous experience of a thunderstorm, the individual assimilates the correlation between the song and the fear response. Gradually, the song alone evolves into a conditioned stimulus endowed with the capacity to elicit the fear response, even devoid of the atmospheric turbulence of a thunderstorm. This narrative vividly portrays the fundamental tenet of classical conditioning, the assimilation of erudite behavior through iterative correlations between a neutral stimulus and an unconditioned stimulus. Within the context of example 2, the intricacies of classical conditioning unfurl through distinct constituents. The unconditioned stimulus, U.S., in this tableau is the thunderstorm. It's imperative to hark back to the notion that the unconditioned stimulus engenders an innate reaction devoid of antecedent learning. In our exposition, the thunderstorm, with its sonorous tumult, assumes the role of the unconditioned stimulus, naturally and automatically evoking the unconditioned response, you are, of fear, an instinctual reaction without any form of conditioning, as elucidated in the course discourse. The neutral stimulus, NS, in this juncture is the song. As per our elucidation in the course discourse, the neutral stimulus initially lacks the potency to evoke a substantial reaction or response. Initially unrelated to the fear response instigated by the thunderstorm, 
The melody remains in neutral stimulus owing to its inability to autonomously elicit a fear response. Through the reiterated couplings of the neutral stimulus, exemplified by the melodic strains of the song, and the unconditioned stimulus, embodied in the climactic tumult of the thunderstorm, the cognitive apparatus forges a nexus between the two. This process of conditioning bequeaths unto the hitherto neutral stimulus the guise of a conditioned stimulus, CS. Following copious iterations, the musical composition attains the faculty to instigate a response akin to the fear response engendered by the initial unconditioned stimulus. In its quintessence, the melody undergoes a metamorphosis engendered by classical conditioning, transmuting from the status of a neutral stimulus to that of a conditioned stimulus. This signifies that it now possesses the autonomy to evoke the identical or a cognate fear response, even sans the presence of the original tempestuous thunderstorm. The puissance of association, meticulously cultivated through the intricate process of classical conditioning, culminates in the song intricately intertwining with the fear response originally tethered to the thunderstorm. Within our illustrative framework, the conditioned response, CR, manifests as fear. Building upon the elucidations from our intellectual discourse in Lecture 5, we apprehend that the conditioned response is an erudite reaction precipitated by that which was antecedently neutral but has now forged an alliance with an innate reaction. The fear response provoked solely by the auditory perception of the song, bereft of the accompanying thunderstorm, embodies the conditioned response. It stands as an acquired reaction brought forth by the conditioned stimulus, song, owing to its affiliation with the unconditioned stimulus, thunderstorm. Ergo, the unconditioned response metamorphoses into a conditioned response when invoked by a conditioned stimulus. Venturing into the realm of Pavlovian conditioning, neutral stimuli, initially bereft of inherent signification, assume a paramount import. These stimuli, spanning a spectrum of entities, objects, lexemes, gesticulations, symbols, or sonorous reverberations, embark upon a transformative odyssey. Through the convoluted process of conditioning, cogitations and imaginative constructs can elicit conditioned responses. This transpires when particular elements, be they objects, individuals, or scenarios, have been systematically conjoined with a specific emotional state within the recesses of an individual's psyche, oftentimes through iterations or traumatic vicissitudes. In this manner, the ostensibly neutral assumes an elevated import and begets learned responses, underscoring the pliability of our emotional and psychological reactions engendered by associative erudition. The experiments elucidated by Pavlov vividly exemplify how an ostensibly neutral entity, such as a bell, and an auditory phenomenon divested of emotional resonance, can, through reiterated pairings with an unconditioned stimulus, elicit an automatic response. To illustrate, the sonorous resonance of a bell does not intrinsically precipitate salivation. Nevertheless, by systematically entwining the auditory resonance of the bell with the introduction of sustenance, an unconditioned stimulus inherently eliciting salivation, the auditory stimulus of the bell eventually garners the potency to instigate salivation autonomously, even sans the accompaniment of sustenance. This stands as a quintessential manifestation of classical conditioning underscoring the acquisition of a learned comportment where the ostensibly neutral stimulus, the bell, attains the capacity to evoke a response due to its affiliation with an unconditioned stimulus. In a parallel vein, when denizens of a particular cohort are unremittingly tethered to notions of malevolence, emotions such as trepidation, ire, repulsion, 
or astonishment may be enkindled upon encountering or deliberating upon those cohort constituents. Diverging from the instinctive salivary response to the bell, which gradually wanes if sustenance is not proffered subsequent to numerous bell resonances, the nexus between the cohort and the perception of malevolence is buttressed through unceasing ubiquity in the media or discourse. Moreover, the cohort constituents do not intrinsically beget any corporeal anticipation for the instigated emotional response, such as fear. Through the correlation of the cohort with malevolence, a learned nexus gestates, culminating in the automatic provocation of these emotions when in proximity to the cohort constituents. This accentuates the formidable influence of erudite associations on our emotional responses, as aptly demonstrated by classical conditioning. Contemplate, if you will, the emotion of disgust, an emotion, par excellence, manifesting as an overt expression of one's conditioned perspective towards a specific cohort perceived as malevolent. Disgust, nestled amidst the pantheon of the seven cardinal emotions, encapsulates a profound inclination of aversion or repulsion towards that which is deemed offensive. This emotional state invariably precipitates sensations of acute revulsion or disquiet, accompanied by discernible facial contortions such as the furrowing of the nose or indications of nausea. Beyond the observable cues, disgust can transmute into corporeal reactions, inducing a sense of queasiness or general discomfort. Remarkably, the corporeal landscape undergoes discernible alterations during the experience of disgust, with nausea serving as a conspicuous corporeal indicator, concomitant with an escalation in both heart rate and blood pressure. The body's stress response may be galvanized, effectuating the discharge of stress hormones, most notably cortisol. Furthermore, disgust can incite the release of neurotransmitters within the cerebral realm, including serotonin, thus wielding influence over mood and emotions. Analogous corporeal metamorphoses unfold during encounters with emotions such as fear, anger, or shock, as we shall expound upon presently. Those individuals conditioned to perceive specific cohorts as malevolent may subtly betray facial expressions that mirror their emotions upon being confronted with members of said groups. Even for those who eschew the overt manifestation of visible emotions, physiological shifts inexorably transpire within the corporeal domain. In our exploration of immediate emotional reactions swayed by perceptions, cogitations, or imaginative constructs, it becomes manifest that engagements with stimuli, particularly members of a presumed cohort associated with malevolence, engender automatic emotional responses sculpted by the intricate constitution of an individual's inner psyche. This inner composition unfailingly begets emotions in congruence with the tenets one has imbibed. Ergo, an individual conditioned to conjoin a particular cohort with malevolence is inherently disposed to spontaneously exhibit symptoms of disgust when contemplating, envisioning, deliberating, or encountering a member of said cohort. The emphasis on the extrinsic milia oftentimes veils the cognizance of internal machinations, encompassing imagination and cogitations steered by deeply ingrained paradigms. When a doctrinated individual confronts stimuli, such as those construed as malevolent, their mental faculties operate ineluctably beyond the purview of conscious control. This dearth of control renders the indoctrinated individual susceptible to the unfurling of injurious automatic emotional responses. This susceptibility intimates a condition reminiscent of subjugation to a malevolent agency that manifests whenever the individual encounters constituents of the delineated cohort, evoking sentiments such as disgust, ire, trepidation, and astonishment. 
These perturbing automatic reactions may be construed as quasi-forces commensurate with perils, emerging each time individuals engage with entities they have been systematically conditioned to perceive as iniquitous. Individuals subjected to certain verities through programming or indoctrination undergo a conditioning process redolent of Pavlovian classical conditioning. Grasping the myriad corporeal transformations concomitant with deleterious emotions begets the inference that indoctrination implants constituents rendering an individual susceptible to extrinsic stimuli endowed with the potential to engender these emotions. As these spontaneous emotional states unfurl automatically, the cognizance of the concomitant corporeal, behavioral, and cerebral alterations in our corporeal vessel frequently eludes our awareness. Consequently, when ensconced within a state of trepidation, constraints are imposed upon our comportment, delineating our actions within the predefined confines of fear an exploration into which shall promptly ensue. In this contextual milieu, predispositions harbored towards individuals, irrespective of rationale, mirror a manifestation tantamount to possession by malevolent agencies. The mere presence of these individuals instigates imbalanced emotional states, encompassing disgust, ire, trepidation, or astonishment. The cultivation and embrace of these biases propagate an internal discord akin to capitulating to the influence of the malevolent forces we have delineated as disgust, ire, trepidation, and astonishment. The antecedent illustrations introduced conceptualizations such as the unconditioned stimulus, US, neutral stimulus, NS, unconditioned response, UR, conditioned stimulus, CS, and conditioned response, CR. Contemplate an individual who, having undergone rigorous training, has been instilled with the discernment to perceive specific constituents of a cohort as malevolent, thereby culminating in fear as her acquired response. This narrative serves as an illustrative paradigm of how the intricate conditioning process molds emotional responses and exerts its influence upon our discernment of particular groups, accentuating the nuanced interplay between acquired associations and emotional states. Unconditioned stimuli that actuate fear are inherently and instinctively fear-eliciting, necessitating no antecedent learning, exemplified by stimuli such as resonant clamors or the sensation of dissent. These stimuli possess the distinctive attribute of engendering an innate fear response sans the need for antecedent associations or conditioning. Consequently, there exists no specific cohort inherently engendering fear responses in others. Responses to fear, beyond these intrinsic stimuli, emerge as learned comportments, precipitated through recurrent pairing or association of a specific group with the concept of malevolence, culminating ultimately in the elicitation of a fear response. Fear, in this context, stands as a paradigmatic exemplification of the lexicons we employ as catalysts for the metamorphoses in our corporeal responses whilst navigating the realm whether as reactive or doctrinated entities. The emotional odyssey, whether delineated as congenial or disconsolate, fundamentally originates from automatic physiological, behavioral, and cerebral responses, sculpted by an ingrained construal of reality. Regardless of the exhibited emotion, precise automatic alterations in physical, behavioral, and cerebral functions unfold. Another facet intrinsic to indoctrination revolves around the proclivity to focalize on the extrinsic milieu, thus rendering it an arduous task to sustain an internal focus. Consequently, we find ourselves emotionally swayed by the myriad individuals, occurrences, or material entities encountered in the quotidian tapestry of our existence. This is palpable in the automatic physiological, 
behavioral, and cerebral alterations stemming from our conditioned construction of reality. Terms such as disquiet, stress, fear, impatience, aversion, anxiety, ire, despondency, or sorrow function as designations for our emotional states influenced by the diurnal reverberations of existence. Each emotional state manifests a degree of corporeal, behavioral, and cerebral metamorphosis within us, and individuals in robust well-being inherently tend to navigate these vicissitudes more adept. The ramifications of predicaments upon our being are inextricably linked to our cognizance thereof. Take, for instance, a sinophobe, a persona harboring an irrational dread or aversion towards canines. In this narrative, does the canine entity per se represent the predicament, or does the fear itself function as a formidable impediment to inner serenity upon encountering dogs? Can a sinophobe conscientiously surmount this fear independently? Plausibly. Those ensnared in the clutches of persistent anxiety or generalized anxiety disorder may discern an arduous endeavor in addressing their condition through introspective endeavors and solitary meditation. The sporadic manifestation of ostensibly inconspicuous sentiments like apprehension, stress, fear, impatience, and ire does not inherently obstruct our execution of diurnal duties. Nevertheless, the recognition that our efficacy attains its zenith when divested of such deleterious emotions becomes imperative. While these emotions are construed as intrinsic facets of existence, their recurrent manifestation underscores the linguistic tapestry sculpting our quotidian encounters. This implies our existence within a reality where the physiological, behavioral, and cerebral irregularities entwined with these sentiments endure. Consequently, the spontaneous manifestation of these emotions signifies that extrinsic stimuli, whether orchestrated or serendipitous, veritably have the potential to disrupt the internal equipoise of doctrinated individuals. Our upbringing serves as the crucible shaping our perception that corporeal, behavioral, and cerebral irregularities emanate from external stimuli, an archetypal experience for the majority. The daily rendezvous with individuals, scenarios, and material entities that disturb our inner tranquility begets a life marked by inner discord or adverse repercussions. This perennial exposure renders us susceptible to extrinsic actualities. The more renewed we become to these repercussions, the less responsive we are to triggers engendering such responses. Consequently, our perception gradually assimilates the belief that reality must inevitably encompass these deleterious emotional oscillations. Even in the absence of a comprehensive comprehension of the enduring behavioral aberrations resulting from the incremental emotional impacts concomitant with fervently adhering to acquired biases, the virtues of resilience, persistence, and adaptability assume paramount significance in the pursuit of authentic objectives. This approach aligns harmoniously with the precepts inculcated within us proffering an intrinsic recompense in authentically endeavoring and prospering amidst any verity encountered. Harmonizing with our higher self undeniably empowers us to wield knowledge and resources adept, fabricating a life wherein external stimuli fail to perturb our corporeal, behavioral, and cerebral responses. Nevertheless, it is imperative to accord due reverence and augmentation to our extant existence. For those embarking upon novel vistas concerning happiness and exaltation, traversing this paradigm shift gradually assumes paramount significance. Exercise gentility in your self-approach, recognizing that, while you may comprehensively apprehend the tenets of mental mastery cognitively, the internal metamorphosis necessitates the cultivation of meditative practices. 
The reconfiguration of your neural lattice stands as an imperatively requisite stride, affording your higher self ingress into the innermost recesses of your subconscious realm for the commencement of healing processes. Redirecting our focus to expound further upon the alignment with the higher self, a commendable practice involves acknowledging your existence sans the interference wrought by ruminations. Although achieving an unblemished mental tabula rosa might prove to be a challenging endeavor initially, dismiss thoughts and sentiments as if they exist as discrete entities. Permit them to meander sans intervention, granting yourself the privilege of pure existence, thereby attaining a state of tranquil repose. In the act of being, your higher self delves into the labyrinth of your unconscious, discerning impediments. Permit the higher self's intrinsic patience to organically disencumber obstacles without coercively compelling epiphanies through sheer force of will. Revel in the mere act of being, extracting delight from the present moment and disregarding burgeoning ruminations and emotions. While meditation constitutes an integral facet of the transformative trajectory, a comprehensive approach encompassing a whole food regimen, habitual physical exertion, and requisite repose emerges as indispensable for a metamorphosis that aligns with your higher self. This odyssey does not culminate therein. At every developmental juncture, the counsel of a sagacious mentor assumes an indispensable role, particularly as you traverse unfamiliar terrain. As we plunge into profound depths, recurrent sessions shall incorporate requisite guidance, thereby facilitating the perpetual refinement of your pursuit for enlightenment. Continuing our discourse, the adaptation to a particular modus operandi implies the assimilation of a connected worldview that intricately intertwines itself, becoming profoundly ingrained as your reality, irrespective of its ramifications on your corporeal, behavioral, and cognitive capacities. To assuage the deleterious impact on these faculties, it is imperative to ameliorate our manner of operation. While external intercession can ameliorate the consequences stemming from years of deleterious conduct, the underlying cause, frequently entrenched in the frailties of character, necessitates conscious exertions of the volition. The query surfaces, can one lead a life emancipated from routinely embraced psychological maladies to avert both ephemeral and enduring dire repercussions? The response is affirmative, yet the attainment of such a lifestyle demands an ardent strife. Rectifying comportment, or more precisely, redirecting the trajectory of our neural network's configuration, begets inevitable repercussions. Advancing on the righteous course mitigates damages stemming from errant conduct, thereby fostering the cognizance that life's adversities metamorphose into opportune avenues for the refinement of character. Consequently, circumstances cease to instigate anxiety, melancholy, or trepidation, transmuting into occasions conducive to self-elevation. Is there a mode of operation that circumvents harm to our corporeal, behavioral, and cognitive faculties? Arguably, it is more deleterious to traverse the terrain of life oblivious to the gradual internal physiological detriment wrought by negative emotional impingement than to recognize and rectify the adverse ramifications stemming from entrenched functioning. Negative emotions incontrovertibly wield an injurious impact on the corporeal and cerebral realms. While we may habituate to fleeting episodes of psychological conditions such as fear, anxiety, and depression, habitual functioning engenders a predisposition to evoke these anomalies when confronted with specific scenarios, objects, or individuals. In the routine cadence of our conduct, subtly influenced by indoctrination, we contribute to an array of emotional and physiological impairments. Over temporal expanse, 
The accrual of these impairments may culminate in pronounced physiological conditions, mandating external intervention. Notwithstanding the diligent endeavors of mental health entities to fathom, evaluate, and intercede in the intricacies of human emotional disorders and their interconnectedness with corporeal and environmental factors, societal attention perennially veers towards superficial alterations. Cosmetic procedures, infrastructural embellishments, and techniques for modifying behavior frequently become the focal points. Nonetheless, these undertakings frequently prove wanting in efficaciously grappling with the internal physiological and emotional quandaries that individuals grapple with. This lacuna in comprehension manifests palpably in our incongruous engagements with others, and sentiment that resonates widely. As long as we envisage ourselves as circumscribed entities fettered by emotional impetuses, our self-awareness languishes in a state of incomplete realization. We are enjoined to primarily identify with the emotional facet of our being, often invoking phrases such as, I couldn't help it, or, I am only human, as rationales for capitulating to emotional impulses. In affiliating ourselves with these delimited facets, we relinquish the boundless potential inherent in our higher self. Consequently, we discern rationale for experiencing perturbation, prejudices, frustration, fear, anxiety, animosity, bigotry, and more. Our media, reciprocally, furnishes the requisite infrastructure to accommodate all these emotional aberrations. When embarking upon the odyssey of reshaping our conduct to augment physical functioning, it inevitably instigates internal conflicts. The challenge resides in overhauling behaviors that have long been construed as normative, with the aim of reconfiguring the intricate neural lattice constituting the physiological underpinnings of our learned automatic emotional responses. This transformative process, inherently, is characterized by conflicts and disarray. Yet the tumult is assuaged through practices such as meditation and respiratory exercises. Concurrent with this metamorphosis, all biochemical reactions and hormonal releases, hitherto deemed conventional, undergo a salutary transformation. The pursuit of behavioral change implies an internal transmutation. Unshackled from indoctrination, our volition could be wielded for choices that elevate our consciousness to loftier realms, emancipated from the clutches of indoctrinated emotions. As reiterated antecedently, our perception is intricately interwoven with deeply entrenched conceptions of reality that have their roots in our formative years. This profound influence manifests in our automatic emotional responses, frequently erroneously perceived as emanating from our conscious volitions. In the intricate navigation of life's convolutions, our reliance on words intricately tethered to events, individuals, or objects unfolds, each lexical entity precipitating an emotional response meticulously calibrated to the import of the situation, person, or object within the grooves of our deeply embedded instructions. It becomes imperative to apprehend that the lexicon we employ in traversing this profoundly ingrained reality transcends mere linguistic signification, it wields hypnotic efficacy, eliciting responses that are, in essence, automatic. For those who conceptualize indoctrination as an embodiment of zombification, the undertaking of introspection metamorphoses into an enlightening odyssey. Given the multitudinous tapestry of unconscious, automatous behaviors and internal processes etched indelibly within our being, an expeditious metamorphosis from our current state to the enlightened trajectory of our higher self assumes the visage of an impractical expectation. Velocity, in this context, does not reign as the paramount factor, rather, a gentler approach harbors the potential for more propitious outcomes, 
Considering the vast repository of inculcated wisdom that spans the annals of generations. In our sojourn toward emancipation from mental shackles, undergoing pivotal experiences becomes elemental for a veritable transition from a lower echelon of existence to a loftier one. Hastening this metamorphic process not only obstructs its organic flow, but may even stifle it entirely. The societal milieu wherein we currently find ourselves is not a capricious assemblage of happenstances. Pondering the tenet of a deity culpable for the entirety of creation begets queries concerning the essence of this divine entity. Does the divine err or harbor predilections tinged with negativity? The coexistence of individuals born into the crucible of health challenges, financial tribulations, and unfavorable socio-cultural conditions juxtaposed with those endowed with robust physical and mental acumen, coupled with financial prosperity, invites scrutiny. In this juncture of heightened self-awareness, repudiating the postulation that our destiny hinges solely upon our actions compels us to contemplate the intrinsic attributes of this creator. Either the Creator erred in the tapestry of fashioning humanity or manifests inclinations towards select individuals. Acknowledging the presumed perfection of the divine necessitates the cognizance of the intricately woven balance and interdependence ingrained within nature, affording all entities the capacity to coexist in a symphony of harmonious accord. In our current state of heightened self-awareness, we possess the faculty to contemplate the far-reaching repercussions of our present choices on the forthcoming conditions of both individuals and society. Environmental degradation, exemplified by the despoiling of rivers and oceans, inevitably inflicts harm upon ecosystems, encompassing the very essence of humanity. We find ourselves compelled to confront the disquieting prospect that our choices have to a lamentable degree, disrupted the pristine equilibrium inherent in the natural order. While our intellectual prowess allows for the anticipation of certain outcomes, it remains tethered to limitations, and, regrettably, myriad of our decisions have, more often than not, resulted in deleterious consequences outweighing any semblance of good. Contemplate the ensuing examples, each serving as a poignant illustration of the equilibrium and interdependence governing nature's intricate tapestry. 1. The Symbiotic Ballet of Bees and Flowers The intricate symbiosis between bees and flowers unfolds as an eloquent manifestation of the delicate equilibrium within nature, wherein bees, in their pollination endeavors, bestow upon flowers the gift of life-giving nectar, thus elucidating the harmonious dance orchestrated by the cosmic choreographer. 2. The Predatory Ballet of Ecosystems The intricacies of ecosystems are illuminated through the balletic interplay between predators and prey, an orchestration underscoring the interdependence wherein the waxing or waning of prey species propels a synchronous response in their predators thereby unveiling the cosmic choreography at play. Upon scrutinizing the repercussions of contemporary choices on the future's canvas, revelations of profound significance emerge. 1. The investment in renewable celestial energies. The visionary investment in renewable energies today possesses the transformative potential to sculpt a more auspicious destiny for future generations by assuaging the perturbations wrought by the spectre of climate change. 2. Conservation Ballet Preserving Biodiversity The concerted ballet of conservation endeavors, dedicated to safeguarding endangered species, becomes a reverent offering to the altar of biodiversity, ensuring a tapestry of life for the progeny of generations yet unborn. The repercussions of polluting rivers and oceans, unfurling across the vast tapestry of existence, yield ramifications across multiple dimensions. 1. 
the lament of oil spills and the aquatic tapestry. The malevolent specter of oil spills in oceans transmogrifies into a lament, unleashing havoc upon the intricate aquatic ecosystems, propelling dire threats upon seabirds, piscine denizens, and sundry organisms intricately enmeshed within the sanctity of the affected habitats. 2. The bane of industrial effluence and the watershed. The injudicious disposal of industrial effluence and the wanton introduction of chemical pollutants into rivers serve as harbingers of water contamination, casting a baleful pool not solely upon aquatic life but also upon communities tethered to these aqueous lifelines for sustenance. These ramifications extend their tendrils into the very heart of the disruption of nature's delicate balance. One. The Aegis of Deforestation Unraveling The wanton aegis of deforestation unfurls as a wide-spreading cataclysm, punctuating the natural balance by eviscerating wildlife sanctuaries, reshaping local climates, and imperiling the stalwart stability of the very soil beneath our feet. 2. The Unholy Intrusion of Invasive Species the unholy intrusion of invasive species portends disturbance in the sanctified precincts of native ecosystems, instigating the decline of indigenous species and sowing seeds of discord that burgeon into ecological imbalances of perilous dimensions. Traversing the intricate tapestry of existence unravels the constraints of intellect in divining forthcoming outcomes. 1. Unforeseen environmental reverberations. The protracted repercussions of certain industrial practices upon the environment prove an enigma, their labyrinthine effects eluding precise prognostication owing to the convoluted interactions within the multifaceted ecosystems. 2. Genetic metamorphoses and ecological ambiguities. The introduction of genetically modified organisms begets uncertainties shrouding potential ecological consequences, despite the scrupulous evaluations conducted by the scientific cognoscenti. Furthermore, select choices compound the inflicted harm. 1. Depletion through the abyss of overfishing. The rapacious act of overfishing has wrought depletion upon marine reservoirs, casting a somber shadow upon both the vitality of the ecosystem and the sustenance of the fishing communities. 2. Unintended vicissitudes of pesticidal onslaught. The injudicious dispensation of pesticides and herbicides yields unintended vicissitudes, inflicting harm upon non-target species and instigating perturbations within the delicate ecosystems. In acknowledging these labyrinthine dynamics, it crystallizes that our choices bear substantial influence, oftentimes precipitating more maleficence than beneficence upon the exquisite equilibrium of our environment. These proffered exemplifications serve as poignant vignettes, elucidating the antecedently broached concepts through tangible instances. Embarking upon an exploration of these instances allows for the revelation of the disquieting impact our choices exact upon the nuanced natural equilibrium and the interconnectedness pervading various denizens. However, as we endeavor to articulate the intrinsic physiological, intellectual, and economic disparities amongst humans, the task assumes an increasingly intricate complexion. In grappling with these abstract ruminations, the invocation of allegorical tales from your proves a salient instrument. The adage, as above, so below, reverberates with profound import, and our aptitude to decipher allegoric expressions burgeons when we delve into the reality nurtured by the wellspring of self-knowledge. Analogously, the dictum, as we feel, we behave, mirrors the resonance of, as above, so below. In this analogy, myriad abstract musings find cognizance and embodiment. The above often looms as an ethereal and elusive realm, resistant to facile visualization. 
Yet, let us not forget that allegoric parlance serves the noble purpose of elucidating abstract ruminations, demanding the deployment of artistic, imaginative, and inherently intuitive faculties for consummate comprehension. Contemplate the comprehension of Earth's rotation and orbital dance around the Sun, orchestrating the perpetual alternation of night and day. Despite the potential intricacies inherent in this celestial ballet, the terrestrial inhabitants never find themselves engulfed in the disorienting sensation of being inverted. In this contemplation, the term, above, within the allegorical tapestry may connote aspects elusive and challenging to apprehend, while, below, signifies elements well within the grasp of our understanding. The ceaseless cascade of the body's internal alchemy, its automatic chemical reactions and hormonal releases, triggered by encounters or recognition of stimuli such as people, events, and objects, instills an illusion of seamless bodily function. Analogously, these concealed internal reactions, akin to the celestial, above, in the allegory, wield unseen influence, while the external stimuli that incite these reactions embody the terrestrial, below, in the allegorical lexicon. In essence, our metaphysical, above, encapsulating the internal milieu of our corporeal temple, undergoes a process of daily programming through interactions with the tangible elements symbolized by the term, below. While one could ostensibly explicate the intricacies of how our emotions and corporeal vessel adapt to functioning apparently under the influence of routine interactions without recourse to allegorical embellishments, the prospect of integrating allegories into our narrative tapestry holds promise for deepening our comprehension of reality. This mirrors the sagacious perspectives of ancient civilizations, transcending the confines of our contemporary indoctrinated thought patterns. Harmonizing with our higher self serves as an ethereal symphony that augments our cognitive faculties endowing us with the discerning ability to unveil imperfections in the purported normalcy of everyday actions as defined by societal convention. Approaching the tapestry of life from the elevated vantage point of our higher self unfurls the tendrils of consciousness, empowering us to glean multifarious meanings from the intricate metaphors woven into the fabric of existence. Our self-awareness is sculpted by the deeply entrenched tenets, fostering an attachment to the sensations born of hormonal secretions and biochemical reactions within the sacred precincts of our corporeal abode. This attachment, meticulously nurtured through the rhythmic cadence of repeated behaviors, begets a state of mental captivity and, by extension, physical constraints. Our actions, intricately circumscribed by emotional predilections harmonized with the doctrinal tenets, perilously caught the tumult of emotional upheaval should we dare to venture abruptly into activities that defy the prescriptive manual of the doctrinal guidance. Navigating existence through the lens of your higher self mandates the fortification of your volition. However, the potency of your volition must be of such magnitude that it surmounts the entrenched automatic principles, seemingly entrenched beyond the immediate grasp of conscious control. Regrettably, the phrase, willpower, exists within a deceptive realm, obscuring the existence of two indispensable faculties for the realization of predetermined objectives, the volition and the potency. Consider, for instance, your aspiration to engage in a marathon, health impediments could thwart this ambition, indicating a dearth of potency. Conversely, possession of the requisite potency without the concomitant volition renders the sought-after achievement elusive. Once the luminosity of these teachings kindles a yearning for inner metamorphosis, the subsequent stride involves buttressing both your volition and potency to effectuate this transformation. In consonance with the virtuous trajectory advocated by these teachings, 
The embracement of a whole food regimen, unwavering commitment to regular physical exercise, and the assurance of ample repose assume pivotal roles in facilitating this intricate process. Even these foundational endeavors necessitate the harmonious confluence of both your volition and potency. Your unwavering dedication to these transformative practices stands as a testament to your potentiality to emancipate your volition from the fetters of mental governance. Naturally, meditation and introspection persist as indispensable components of this labyrinthine journey. Acknowledging the circumscription of our volition raises profound queries concerning the assertion of autonomy, particularly when reflexive comportments emanate from the most profound recesses of our being, an unfamiliar expanse within our corporeal vessel. Despite contentions positing that learned comportments tend towards automatization, aligning with the trajectory of the higher self bequeaths manifold advantages. Adopting this modus operandi serves as a bulwark against the constriction within the parameters defined by descriptors signifying specific gradations of mental aberrations. Surrendering to the counsel of our higher self initiates a gradual emancipation from mental governance, culminating in immunity to the sway of influences stemming from entities perceived, heard, taught, or envisioned. To expound upon the ramifications of vulnerability, contemplate an individual harboring profound negative sentiments toward women in occupational settings, colloquially designated as a misogynist. Such an individual may encounter disquietude or adversities in an environment characterized by diversity. Purposefully situating women proximate to the individual's operational sphere might instigate their withdrawal, thereby accentuating the impediments a misogynistic person could confront within an assorted workplace milieu. This implies that an individual with misogynistic proclivities is predisposed to perturbation in the presence of women, imperiling potential opportunities due to this inherent susceptibility. Expanding upon this illustrative paradigm, the ramifications extend beyond the precincts of emotional impact, permeating diverse dimensions of existence. Biases inculcated through pedagogy not only yield emotional and corporeal deficiencies, but also cast a pervasive influence on professional and societal engagements. Indoctrination, with its explicit objective of mental hegemony, renders our cognitive apparatus amenable to a myriad of perceived and imagined stimuli. Scrutinizing the underpinnings of conduct, objectives, and aspirations unveils the conditional underpinnings that steer these pursuits. Efficient indoctrination adroitly steers our discernment, choreographing a reality that guides our decision-making process from the nascent years of our existence to the present juncture. Consequently, when confronted with stimuli such as individuals, circumstances, occurrences, or material entities engendering conditioned emotional responses, our innate capacity to perceive challenges as avenues for personal development becomes encumbered. Biases ingrained through indoctrination delineate the parameters under which we construe challenges as conduits for enhancement. While ardently striving for physical well-being or evincing determination to master tasks for intellectual and economic ascendancy, these proclivities tend to waver when confronted with specific stimuli that activate our biases, fears, anxieties, aversions, gratifications, yearnings, or carnal desires. Our cognitive faculties are meticulously molded to serve tenets in alignment with a reality meticulously crafted for the purpose of mental dominance. The narrative instilled within our cognitive tapestry perpetuates the notion that our fears, biases, anxieties, aversions, displeasure, longings, wishes, and the like emanate from intrinsic qualities inherent in entities such as individuals circumstances, occurrences, 
and material entities. This narrative insinuates that these entities possess an inherent potency to instigate mental distress in us merely through their existence. Consequently, we find ourselves ensnared in a state of vulnerability, contending with the formidable challenge of harmoniously coexisting in the same temporal and spatial dimensions with elements that evoke undesired emotional responses. In response, our customary recourse tends to involve manipulating external conditions, expunging elements that disrupt our emotional equilibrium, rather than perceiving those triggers of unwarranted emotions as invaluable opportunities for profound character development. Embracing such challenges not only facilitates the acquisition of the art of sustaining inner tranquility but also emancipates us from biases that precipitate negative automatic responses when confronted with stimuli suggestive of such reactions. Our conspicuous lack of awareness regarding the automatic responses engendering the aforementioned issues might lead to an underestimation of the imperative nature of restoring the aberrant internal flux to a state of equilibrium innate to natural functioning. It is imperative to recognize that these aberrations, insidiously normalized within our corporeal framework, transpire through unbridled biochemical secretions and hormonal releases, engendering an internal milieu marked by disequilibrium and, consequently, a mode of operation deleterious to our well-being. This discourse has traversed a myriad of conceptual landscapes and ideas. Further elucidation on numerous facets intrinsic to these concepts will be unfurled in successive discourses. Reflecting upon the information already disseminated holds greater import than introducing additional material to this already intricate cognitive terrain. I express my sincere appreciation for your intrepid curiosity in delving into the realms of the self. I extend my gratitude to you, courageous individuals. Our trajectories will converge once more in the forthcoming discourse. Sat vocabulary words. Vocabulary list number one. One aberrations. Part of speech noun. Definition: departure from what is normal, usual, or expected, typically one that is unwelcome. Sentence: our modus operandi in the grand theater of existence mirrors the kaleidoscopic panorama of our indoctrinated worldview giving rise to aberrations in the symphony of our corporeal, behavioral, and cognitive repertoire. 2. Abyss Part of speech, noun Definition, a deep or seemingly bottomless chasm. Sentence, the embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. Trois accords. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to give or grant someone power, status, or recognition. Sentence, however, as one embarks upon this transformative odyssey, it becomes imperative to accord due significance to and refine one's present life. For accrued. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, accumulated or received over time. Sentence, our existence, far from a fortuitous occurrence, stands as the apotheosis of influences accrued through successive generations, shaping the very essence of our being. 5. Adjectival Part of speech, adjective. Definition, relating to or functioning as an adjective. Sentence, specific linguistic constructs or adjectival nuances tethered to experiential events possess the remarkable capacity to evoke a kaleidoscope of nuanced emotional reactions, each accompanied by its intricate spectrum of physiological, behavioral, and cognitive oscillations, concomitant with biochemical reactions and hormonal releases. 6. Adjudged Part of speech, verb. 
Definition, to pass judgment or determine after careful consideration. Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 7. Adorned. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, decorated or added beauty to. Sentence, the veracity of our apprehension of reality crystallizes within the framework of deeply ingrained conceptualizations about what is deemed authentic and tangible, adorned with the intricate embroidery of our cognitive and emotional tapestry. 8. Adroitly. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a clever or skillful way. Sentence, the embrace of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 9. Amenable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, willing or responsive to suggestion or influence. Sentence, through an expedition into Pavlovian classical conditioning, we have elucidated the conduits wherein individuals may find themselves ensnared within the labyrinth of cognition. Biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. Our environs metamorphose into fertile grounds for the inception and fortification of such biases. Effective vicissitudes stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. 10. Amidst Part of speech, preposition Definition, in the middle of or surrounded by. Sentence, despite navigating existence amidst an array of adverse emotions, most among us adeptly discharge quotidian responsibilities. Elfter Angst Part of speech, noun. Definition, a feeling of deep anxiety or dread. Sentence, individuals contending with persistent angst, for instance, may grapple with impediments when endeavoring self-reflection and partaking in meditation as a panacea for their emotional tumult. 12. Antecedent Part of speech, noun Definition, a thing or event that existed before or logically precedes another. Sentence, the lexicon of emotions, enlisting terms such as disgust, anger, fear, shock, hate, lust, and more, attests to the internal schisms we grapple with, elucidated through antecedent discourse exploring unconditional stimulus, neutral stimulus, unconditional response, conditioned stimulus, and conditioned response. 13. Array Part of speech, noun Definition, an impressive display or range of things. Sentence, despite navigating existence amidst an array of adverse emotions, most among us adeptly discharge quotidian responsibilities. 14. Asymmetries. Part of speech, noun. Definition, lack of symmetry or equality. Sentence, life's intricacy defies facile explications, compelling a nuanced exploration of its convolutions and asymmetries. 15. Auspicious Part of speech, adjective Definition, favorable or conducive to success Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 16. Attuned Part of speech, adjective Definition, in harmony or agreement 
sentence, the labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum, sculpted through the crucible of doctrination, renders us amenable to the sway of our ruminations. 17. Apotheosis Part of speech, noun Definition, the highest point in the development or culmination of something. Sentence, our existence, far from a fortuitous occurrence, stands as the apotheosis of influences accrued through successive generations, shaping the very essence of our being. 18. Apprehension Part of speech, noun Definition, understanding or perception of something Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 19. Automatisms Part of speech, noun Definition, unconscious, involuntary, and automatic behavior Sentence, the veracity of our apprehension of reality crystallizes within the framework of deeply ingrained conceptualizations about what is deemed authentic and tangible. This perceptual lens, inextricably linked to our cognitive apparatus, exerts a profound influence on the automatisms inherent in our emotional responses. Vocabulary list number 2 1. Beseeching Part of speech, verb, gerund. Definition, urgently and fervently requesting. Sentence, communing with the higher self emerges as a catalyst for heightened cognizance, beseeching us to unveil imperfections woven into the fabric of our quotidian rituals. 2. Behooves. Part of speech, verb. Definition, it is necessary or appropriate for. Sentence 1. Though initially a formidable undertaking, it behooves us to sagaciously recognize and rectify the emotional wounds inflicted by the tenets of indoctrination, eschewing the perpetuation of ignorance concerning the gradual physiological and emotional erosion they insidiously sow within our sentient being. Sentence 2. It behooves us to sagaciously recognize and rectify the emotional wounds inflicted by the tenets of indoctrination, eschewing the perpetuation of ignorance concerning the gradual physiological and emotional erosion they insidiously sow within our sentient being. 3. Begets. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to give rise to or bring about. Sentence, this, in turn, begets turbulent emotional states characterized by dissonance. 4. Capitulating Part of speech, verb, gerund Definition, surrendering or yielding to an opponent or situation. Sentence, engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response, akin to the arousal of latent forces within, rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. 5. Choreography Part of speech, noun Definition, the sequence and arrangement of dance or movement Sentence, the celestial choreography of harmonious revolutions and the symbiotic interplay among sentient entities intimate the imperative need for a natural equilibrium for life's flourishing. 6. Circumvention Part of speech, noun Definition, the action of avoiding something Sentence, the principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences Proffer sagacious counsel, facilitating the circumvention of commonplace pitfalls and fostering a more efficacious pursuit of our loftiest aspirations. 7. Clutches Part of speech, noun Definition, a person's power or control, especially when perceived as restrictive. 
Sentence, the process of metamorphosing our behavioral patterns necessitates grappling with internal conflicts as we contend with the arduous task of altering habits that have become entrenched in the very fabric of our being. 8. Cogitation Part of speech, noun Definition, the action of thinking deeply about something, contemplation Sentence, the labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum, sculpted through the crucible of doctrination, renders us amenable to the sway of our ruminations. 9. Compelling Part of speech, adjective Definition, evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. Sentence, the allure inherent in treading this elevated path remains irresistibly compelling. 10. Conceptualizations Part of speech, noun Definition, the action or process of forming a concept or idea. Sentence, the veracity of our apprehension of reality crystallizes within the framework of deeply ingrained conceptualizations about what is deemed authentic and tangible. 11. Confers Part of speech, verb Definition, to grant or bestow a title, degree, benefit, or right. Sentence, the embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 12. Concomitant Part of speech, adjective Definition, occurring or existing concurrently Sentence, Confrontations with particular personages, occurrences, or entities that actuate the manifestation of our biases instigate automatic emotional responses concomitant with perceptible metamorphoses in physique, comportment, and cognition. 13. Confines Part of speech, noun Definition, limits or boundaries Sentence, the metaphorical analogy of indoctrination assuming the semblance of a process akin to zombification resonates particularly with those engaged in the introspective examination of their cognitive landscapes, transcending the confines of unconscious, automatic behaviors. 14. Contours Part of speech, noun Definition 1 the outline of a figure or body, the edge or line that defines or bounds a shape or object. Definition 2. Outlines or contours, especially of a figure or body. Sentence 1. The principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. Sentence 2. Notwithstanding the imposition of indoctrination, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. 15. Convolutions Part of speech, noun Definition, complicated twists or coils Sentence, life's intricacy defies facile explications, compelling a nuanced exploration of its convolutions and asymmetries. 16. Credos Part of speech, noun Definition, sets of beliefs or guiding principles. Sentence, the iterative enactment of indoctrinated behaviors sets the theatrical stage for cognitive subjugation, coercing actions to adhere to entrenched doctrines or risking emotional upheaval when deviating from inculcated credos. 17. Circumstances Part of speech, noun Definition, a fact or condition connected with or relevant to an event or action. Sentence, the intricacies of our emotional responses often find their roots in the circumstantial tapestry of our individual experiences. 18. Constraints Part of speech, verb Definition, 
to compel or force someone toward a particular course of action. Sentence, the societal framework sometimes constrains individuals to conform to predefined roles, limiting the expression of their authentic selves. 19. Contemplation. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the action of looking thoughtfully at something for a long time. Sentence, engaging in moments of contemplation allows us to delve into the depths of our own consciousness, unraveling layers of conditioned responses. 20. Contentions. Part of speech, noun. Definition, heated disagreement. Sentence, navigating through contentions requires a delicate balance of expressing one's perspective while remaining open to understanding the viewpoints of others. Vocabulary list number three. One, deemed. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to regard or consider in a specific way. Sentence, engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response akin to the arousal of latent forces within, rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. 2. Deleterious Part of speech, adjective Definition, causing harm or damage Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. 3. Demeanor Part of speech, noun Definition, outward behavior or bearing. Sentence, the embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 4. Denouma. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the final resolution or outcome of a story or situation. Sentence, in our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets to unravel the intricacies of cognitive subjugation. 5. Despondency Part of speech, noun Definition, state of being in low spirits and discouraged Sentence, transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 6. Discharge Part of speech, verb Definition, to perform or fulfill one's duties or responsibilities. Sentence, despite navigating existence amidst an array of adverse emotions, most among us adeptly discharge quotidian responsibilities. 7. Disparities. Part of speech, noun. Definition, differences or inequalities. Sentence, the presence of health and aptitude disparities from the inception of life may instigate contemplation regarding the agency of an unjust or flawed progenitor in orchestrating the intricacies of existence. 8. Discernible Part of speech, adjective Definition, perceptible or noticeable Sentence, it becomes discernible that our collective and individual choices may contribute to any extant disequilibrium in the tapestry of life. 9. Dissonance Part of speech, noun Definition, lack of harmony or agreement Sentence, this, in turn, begets turbulent emotional states characterized by dissonance. 10. Enacted Part of speech, verb, past participle. 
Definition, carried out or performed. Sentence, our choices, whether enacted collectively or individually, possess the potential to disrupt this equilibrium, thereby contributing to the observed disparities in the tableau of life. 11. Enshrouded. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, covered, hidden, or wrapped. Sentence, it becomes incumbent upon us to apprehend the mesmerizing effects enshrouded within the lexical fabric and ideational constructs that steer our navigation through the multifarious realms of our existence within this tangible reality, precipitating reflexive, automatic responses. 12. Ensconced Part of speech, verb, past participle Definition, settled securely or snugly. Sentence, doctrination consciously diverts our focus outward, engendering a formidable impediment to sustaining internal cognizance. 13. Ensnares. Part of speech, verb, present tense. Definition, catches or traps. Sentence, through an expedition into Pavlovian classical conditioning, we have elucidated the conduits wherein individuals may find themselves ensnared within the labyrinth of cognition. 14. Environs Part of speech, noun Definition, surrounding areas or surroundings Sentence Biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. Our environs metamorphose into fertile grounds for the inception and fortification of such biases. 15. Erratic Part of speech, adjective Definition, irregular or unpredictable in movement, pattern, or behavior. Sentence, effective vicissitudes stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. 16. Evinces Part of speech, verb, present tense. Definition, reveals or indicates clearly. Sentence, effective vicissitude stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. 17. Efficaciously. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a way that produces the desired result. Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. 18. Effusion Part of speech, noun Definition, an outpouring of something, usually emotions. Sentence, upon construing acquired cognizance as adverse, an effusion of undesirable emotions ensues organically, resisting metamorphosis into sanguine ones. 19. Embrace. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to accept or support willingly. Sentence, the embrace of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 20. Engendering Part of speech, verb, gerund Definition, bringing into existence or causing Sentence, indoctrination, in its subtle machinations, intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 21 environ 
Part of speech, noun. Definition, surrounding areas or surroundings. Sentence, biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. Our environs metamorphose into fertile grounds for the inception and fortification of such biases. 22. Entailed. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, involved as a necessary or inevitable part or consequence. Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. 23. Equanimous Part of speech, adjective. Definition, having or showing calmness and composure, especially in difficult situations. Sentence, the embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 24. Equipoise. Part of speech, noun. Definition, balance or equilibrium, especially in a person's mind or emotions. Sentence, daily confrontations disrupt our internal equipoise, and familiarity with these disruptions attenuates sensitivity, nurturing a conviction that tumultuous emotional vacillations constitute an innate facet of reality. 25. Ethereal Part of speech, adjective Definition, extremely delicate, light, and otherworldly. Sentence, this ethereal phenomenon portends that our assimilated cognizance, whether derived from media or interpersonally transmitted founts, actively instills certain influences within our cognitive tapestry. 26. Efficaciously. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a way that produces the desired result. Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. 27. Encountering. Part of speech, verb, gerund. Definition, to unexpectedly experience or be faced with. Sentence, the inherent evolution mandates the judicious incorporation of meditation into the fabric of daily routine, encountering the intricacies of transformative experiences. 28. Enshrouded. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, covered, hidden, or wrapped. Sentence, it becomes incumbent upon us to apprehend the mesmerizing effects enshrouded within the lexical fabric and ideational constructs that steer our navigation through the multifarious realms of our existence within this tangible reality, precipitating reflexive, automatic responses. 29. Ensnared. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, caught or trapped. Sentence, through an expedition into Pavlovian classical conditioning, we have elucidated the conduits wherein individuals may find themselves ensnared within the labyrinth of cognition. 30. Environs. Part of speech, noun. Definition, surrounding areas or surroundings. Sentence, biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. 
Our environs metamorphose into fertile grounds for the inception and fortification of such biases. 31. Erratic Part of speech, adjective Definition, irregular or unpredictable in movement, pattern, or behavior Sentence, effective vicissitudes stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. 32. Evinces Part of speech, verb, present participle. Definition, reveals or indicates clearly. Sentence, effective vicissitudes stemming from ingrained misconceptions materialize in internal corporeal responses, evincing as an augmented cardiac pulsation and erratic hormonal discharges. 33 facile. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, superficial or simplistic. Sentence, life's intricacies defy reductionist elucidations, necessitating a profound comprehension of its labyrinthine nature. 34. Flawed Part of speech, adjective Definition, having imperfections or defects Sentence, dismissing the notion that our fates are exclusively sculpted by individual deeds invokes scrutiny toward a creator harboring imperfections or exhibiting predilections. 35. Fostering Part of speech, verb, gerund Definition, promoting the growth or development of Sentence, the principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences, proffer sagacious counsel, facilitating the circumvention of commonplace pitfalls and fostering a more efficacious pursuit of our loftiest aspirations. 36. Frustration Part of speech, noun Definition the feeling of being upset or annoyed, especially because of the inability to change or achieve something. Sentence, the embracement of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 37. Fealty Part of speech, noun Definition, loyalty to a superior or lord, especially in feudalism. Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions, the paramount importance of resilience and adaptability manifests as indispensable in the relentless pursuit of authentic objectives. 38. Formidable Part of speech, adjective Definition, inspiring fear or respect through being impressively powerful or capable. Sentence Doctrination consciously diverts our focus outward, engendering a formidable impediment to sustaining internal cognizance. 39. Founts Part of speech, noun Definition, sources or origins Sentence, this ethereal phenomenon portends that our assimilated cognizance, whether derived from media or interpersonally transmitted founts, actively instills certain influences within our cognitive tapestry. 40. Grapple Part of speech, verb Definition, to struggle or wrestle with something Sentence, individuals contending with persistent angst, for instance, may grapple with impediments when endeavoring self-reflection and partaking in meditation as a panacea for their emotional tumult. 41. Gleaned Part of speech, verb, past participle Definition, extracted or obtained information slowly and carefully Sentence, insights gleaned from introspective practices serve as the cornerstone for unraveling the intricacies of one's cognitive landscape. 42. Gregarious Part of speech, adjective 
Definition, sociable and fond of the company of others. Sentence, engaging in meaningful dialogues and fostering gregarious connections are pivotal elements in navigating the labyrinth of human experiences. 43. Harboring. Part of speech, verb, gerund. Definition, sheltering or giving refuge to. Sentence, harboring ingrained biases perpetuates a cycle of prejudice, hindering the progression towards a more equitable and inclusive societal framework. 44. Heuristic. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, enabling a person to discover or learn something for themselves. Sentence, adopting a heuristic approach to knowledge acquisition empowers individuals to explore and comprehend diverse perspectives. 45. Hierarchical. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, arranged in a hierarchy, classified according to various levels of authority. Sentence, hierarchical structures in societal systems can influence the distribution of power and contribute to disparities among individuals. 46. Hubris. Part of speech, noun. Definition, excessive pride or self-confidence, often leading to downfall. Sentence, hubris can blind individuals to their own shortcomings, impeding personal and collective growth. 47. Immutable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, unchanging over time, unalterable. Sentence, while certain principles may be immutable, adapting one's perspectives is essential for personal evolution. 48. Impetus. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the force or energy with which a body moves, a driving force. Sentence, a quest for self-discovery often provides the impetus for transformative journeys. 49. Inception. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the beginning or starting point of something. Sentence, exploring the inception of one's beliefs unveils the intricate threads woven into the fabric of personal ideologies. 50. Incumbent. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, necessary as a duty or responsibility, obligatory. Sentence, it becomes incumbent upon individuals to critically examine their belief systems for personal and collective growth. Vocabulary list number four. One, imbued. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, inspired or permeated with a feeling or quality. Sentence, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality, imbued with the collective wisdom of human experiences. 2. Imminent. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, about to happen, impending. Sentence, in our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets to unravel the intricacies of cognitive subjugation. 3. Imperative. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, of vital importance, crucial. Sentence, however, as one embarks upon this transformative odyssey, it becomes imperative to accord due significance to and refine one's present life. 4. Inauspicious. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, unfavorable or not conducive to success. Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 5. Inception. Part of speech, noun. 
Definition, the beginning or starting point. Sentence, the provenance of our ruminations becomes obfuscated, leaving us in quandary regarding their authenticity or whether they are mere byproducts of misguided doctrines about veracity. 6. Inequitable. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, unfair or unjust. Sentence, the concept of an inequitable or defective architect shaping life gains currency when disparities in health, aptitude, and economic circumstances manifest from the commencement of existence. 7. Inextricably. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a way that is impossible to disentangle or separate. Sentence, the metaphorical analogy of indoctrination assuming the semblance of a process akin to zombification resonates particularly with those engaged in the introspective examination of their cognitive landscapes, transcending the confines of unconscious, automatic behaviors. 8. Inception Part of speech, noun Definition, the beginning or starting point of something Sentence, the presence of health and aptitude disparities from the inception of life may instigate contemplation regarding the agency of an unjust or flawed progenitor in orchestrating the intricacies of existence. 9. Incumbent Part of speech, adjective Definition, necessary for someone as a duty or responsibility Sentence, it becomes incumbent upon us to apprehend the mesmerizing effects enshrouded within the lexical fabric and ideational constructs that steer our navigation through the multifarious realms of our existence within this tangible reality, precipitating reflexive, automatic responses. 10. Inauspicious Part of speech, adjective Definition, not conducive to success, unpromising. Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 11. Incumbent. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, necessary as a duty or responsibility, obligatory. Sentence, it becomes incumbent upon individuals to critically examine their belief systems for personal and collective growth. 12. Inception. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the beginning or starting point of something. Sentence, exploring the inception of one's beliefs unveils the intricate threads woven into the fabric of personal ideologies. 13. Inextricably. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, in a way that is impossible to disentangle or separate. Sentence, this perceptual lens, inextricably linked to our cognitive apparatus, exerts a profound influence on the automatisms inherent in our emotional responses. 14. Imbued. Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, inspired or permeated with a feeling or quality. Sentence, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality, imbued with the collective wisdom of human experiences. 15. Imperative. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, of vital importance, crucial. Sentence, however, as one embarks upon this transformative odyssey, it becomes imperative to accord due significance to and refine one's present life. 16. Inception. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the beginning or starting point. Sentence, the provenance of our ruminations becomes obfuscated, leaving us in quandary regarding their authenticity or whether they are mere byproducts of misguided doctrines about veracity. 
Seventeen iterative. Part of speech adjective. Definition repeated or recurring. Sentence the iterative enactment of indoctrinated behaviors sets the theatrical stage for cognitive subjugation, coercing actions to adhere to entrenched doctrines or risking emotional upheaval when deviating from inculcated credos. 18. Interlude. Part of speech, noun. Definition, short intervening periods or episodes. Sentence, transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 19. Judicious. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, having, showing, or done with good judgment or sense. Sentence, the inherent evolution mandates the judicious incorporation of meditation into the fabric of daily routine, encountering the intricacies of transformative experiences. 20. Kaleidoscope. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a constantly changing pattern or sequence of elements. Sentence, transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 21. Kaleidoscopic Part of speech, adjective. Definition, exhibiting a complex and shifting pattern or sequence. Sentence, our modus operandi in the grand theater of existence mirrors the kaleidoscopic panorama of our indoctrinated worldview, giving rise to aberrations in the symphony of our corporeal, behavioral, and cognitive repertoire. Vocabulary list number five. 1. Labyrinthine. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, complicated and confusing, like a labyrinth. Sentence, whether one finds oneself in the throes of academic pursuits, deeply entrenched within the labyrinthine realms of erudition, or merely harboring aspirations to embellish the lexicon, there exist adaptations finely attuned to the parlance of the SAT, replete with elucidations and exemplar sentences proffered in denouma. 2. Lexicon Part of speech, noun Definition, the vocabulary or set of terms used in a particular subject, language, or profession. Sentence 1, whether one finds oneself in the throes of academic pursuits, deeply entrenched within the labyrinthine realms of erudition, or merely harboring aspirations to embellish the lexicon, there exist adaptations finely attuned to the parlance of the SAT, replete with elucidations and exemplar sentences proffered in denouma. Sentence 2. The lexicon of emotions, enlisting terms such as disgust, anger, fear, shock, hate, lust, and more, attests to the internal schisms we grapple with, elucidated through antecedent discourse exploring unconditional stimulus, neutral stimulus, unconditional response, conditioned stimulus, and conditioned response. 3. Loftiest Part of speech, adjective Definition, of the highest or noblest kind. Sentence, the embrace of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 4. Machinations. Part of speech, noun. Definition, crafty schemes or plots, especially with an intent to deceive or achieve an end. 
sentence, indoctrination in its subtle machinations intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 5. Maleficent Part of speech, adjective Definition, causing harm or mischief, having malevolent intentions. Sentence, indoctrination in its subtle machinations intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 6. Notwithstanding. Part of speech, preposition. Definition, in spite of, although. Sentence, notwithstanding the imposition of indoctrination, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. 7. Nuanced. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, characterized by subtle shades of meaning or expression. Sentence, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. 8. Nexus. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a connection or link. Sentence, the interplay of these constituents underscores the labyrinthine nexus of our conditioned rejoinders to the erudite apprehension of our environs. 9. Odyssey. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a long and adventurous journey with various experiences. Sentence 1. Salutations, Venerable Assembly, as we embark upon the illuminative odyssey of the erudition of Self Academy's Seventh Discourse. Sentence 2. Transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 10. Obfuscated Part of speech, verb, past participle Definition, rendered unclear or unintelligible Sentence, the provenance of our ruminations becomes obfuscated, leaving us in quandary regarding their authenticity or whether they are mere byproducts of misguided doctrines about veracity. 11. Pragmatic. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, dealing with things sensibly and realistically. Sentence, the process of metamorphosing our behavioral patterns necessitates grappling with internal conflicts as we contend with the arduous task of altering habits that have become entrenched in the very fabric of our being. 12. Proffer Part of speech, verb Definition, to offer or present Sentence, these principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences, proffer sagacious counsel. 13. Propel. Part of speech, verb. Definition, to drive, push, or cause to move in a particular direction. Sentence, the principles indelibly impressed upon our consciousness possess the potency to efficaciously propel us toward the realization of goals within the nuanced contours of our existential reality. 14. Parlance Part of speech, noun Definition, a particular way of speaking or using words, especially within a specific profession or group. 
Sentence, in our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets to unravel the intricacies of cognitive subjugation. 15. Pecuniary Part of speech, adjective Definition, relating to or consisting of money Sentence Biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. 16. Pernicious Part of speech, adjective Definition, having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual or subtle way. Sentence, biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. 17. Proffered Part of speech, verb, past participle Definition, presented or offered for acceptance Sentence, in our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets. Vocabulary list number 6. 1. Panacea. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a solution or remedy for all difficulties or diseases. Sentence, individuals contending with persistent angst, for instance, may grapple with impediments when endeavoring self-reflection and partaking in meditation as a panacea for their emotional tumult. 2. Perennial Part of speech, adjective Definition, lasting or existing for a long or apparently infinite time. Sentence, transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 3. Perpetual Part of speech, adjective Definition, continuing or enduring forever, everlasting. Sentence, transient interludes of anxiety, despondency, and trepidation are deemed normative human responses to quotidian vicissitudes, underscoring the kaleidoscope of emotional states inherent in our existential odyssey and alluding to the perennial deviations from the norm. 4. Personages Part of speech, noun. Definition, persons of distinction or importance. Sentence, confrontations with particular personages, occurrences, or entities that actuate the manifestation of our biases instigate automatic emotional responses concomitant with perceptible metamorphoses in physique, comportment, and cognition. 5. Poignant Part of speech, adjective. Definition, evoking a keen sense of sadness or regret, deeply moving. Sentence, expressions such as disgusted, e angry, e fearful, e and a shocked serve as poignant descriptors for these forces, spontaneously manifesting as if adverse spirits assume dominion when we contemplate or confront elements conditioned as negative. 6. Predilections Part of speech, noun Definition, a preference or special liking for something, a bias in favor of something. Sentence 1, indoctrination, in its subtle machinations, intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 
Sentence 2, indoctrination in its subtle machinations intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 7. Precipitates Part of speech, verb Definition to cause an event or situation, typically one that is bad or undesirable, to happen suddenly, unexpectedly, or prematurely. Sentence, regardless of whether an emotion is adjudged auspicious or inauspicious, it precipitates from involuntary physiological, behavioral, and cognitive reactions to our conditioned apprehension of reality. 8. Portends Part of speech, verb. Definition, to be a sign or warning that something is likely to happen. Sentence, this ethereal phenomenon portends that our assimilated cognizance, whether derived from media or interpersonally transmitted founts, actively instills certain influences within our cognitive tapestry. Vocabulary list number 7. 1. Quandary. Part of speech, noun. Definition, a state of uncertainty or perplexity, especially as requiring a choice between equally unfavorable options. Sentence, the provenance of our ruminations becomes obfuscated, leaving us in quandary regarding their authenticity or whether they are mere byproducts of misguided doctrines about veracity. 2. Quotidian. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, relating to or occurring every day, daily. Sentence, despite navigating existence amidst an array of adverse emotions, most among us adeptly discharge quotidian responsibilities. 3. Ramifications. Part of speech, noun. Definition, consequences or results that follow an action or decision. Sentence, biases ingrained through doctrination, encompassing stereotypes, discrimination, or prejudice, often elude cognizance for their pernicious ramifications on cognitive, corporeal well-being, and even one's pecuniary holdings. 4. Rejoinders Part of speech, noun Definition, a reply, especially a sharp or witty one. Sentence, the interplay of these constituents underscores the labyrinthine nexus of our conditioned rejoinders to the erudite apprehension of our environs. 5. Renditions Part of speech, noun Definition, interpretations or performances of a particular piece of music, art, or text. Sentence, it is imperative to grasp that each discourse manifests in diverse iterations, wherein those adorned with the designations a academic or a academia a encapsulate a lexicon of heightened sophistication. 6. Ruminations Part of speech, noun Definition, deep thoughts or contemplations Sentence, the labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum, sculpted through the crucible of doctrination, renders us amenable to the sway of our ruminations. 7. Sagacious Part of speech, adjective Definition, wise, having keen perception and sound judgment Sentence, these principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences, proffer sagacious counsel. 8. Sagacity Part of speech, noun Definition, the quality of being sagacious, wisdom. Sentence, the embrace of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 9. Seamless Part of speech, adjective Definition, smooth and continuous, without any apparent interruptions or seams. 
Sentence, whether one finds oneself in the throes of academic pursuits deeply entrenched within the labyrinthine realms of erudition or merely harboring aspirations to embellish the lexicon, there exist adaptations finely attuned to the parlance of the SAT replete with elucidations and exemplar sentences proffered in denouement. 10. Sentient Part of speech, adjective Definition, conscious, aware, and able to perceive and feel. Sentence, it behooves us to sagaciously recognize and rectify the emotional wounds inflicted by the tenets of indoctrination, eschewing the perpetuation of ignorance concerning the gradual physiological and emotional erosion they insidiously sow within our sentient being. 11. Sway Part of speech, noun Definition, influence or control over someone or something. Sentence 1, the labyrinthine circuitry of the cerebrum, sculpted through the crucible of doctrination, renders us amenable to the sway of our ruminations. Sentence 2, consequently, engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response, akin to the arousal of latent forces within rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. 12. Steeped Part of speech, verb Definition, immersed or soaked in a liquid Sentence, these principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences, proffer sagacious counsel. Vocabulary list number 8 1. Tapestry Part of speech, noun Definition, a complex and interconnected sequence Sentence, these principles steeped in the collective tapestry of shared human experiences proffer sagacious counsel 2. Tenets Part of speech, noun Definition, principles or beliefs held by a person or an organization. Sentence, in our trajectory, forthcoming discourses may deviate from the explication of Pavlovian classical conditioning owing to our imminent consummation in the application of its tenets to unravel the intricacies of cognitive subjugation. 3. Throws Part of speech, noun Definition, intense or violent pain and struggle. Sentence, whether one finds oneself in the throes of academic pursuits deeply entrenched within the labyrinthine realms of erudition or merely harboring aspirations to embellish the lexicon, there exist adaptations finely attuned to the parlance of the SAT replete with elucidations and exemplar sentences proffered in denouement. 4. Tethered Part of speech, verb, past participle. Definition, tied or bound to a specific point or state. Sentence, specific linguistic constructs or adjectival nuances tethered to experiential events possess the remarkable capacity to evoke a kaleidoscope of nuanced emotional reactions, each accompanied by its intricate spectrum of physiological, behavioral, and cognitive oscillations, concomitant with biochemical reactions and hormonal releases. 5. Tumult Part of speech, noun. Definition, a loud, confused noise, especially one caused by a large mass of people. Sentence, individuals contending with persistent angst, for instance, may grapple with impediments when endeavoring self-reflection and partaking in meditation as a panacea for their emotional tumult. 6. Tumultuous Part of speech, adjective Definition, making a loud, confused noise, uproarious. Sentence, daily confrontations disrupt our internal equipoise, and familiarity with these disruptions attenuates sensitivity, nurturing a conviction that tumultuous emotional vacillations constitute an innate facet of reality. 7. Treacherous Part of speech, adjective 
Definition, dangerous, hazardous, or fraught with peril. Sentence, the embrace of one's higher self confers the sagacity to navigate adversities with an equanimous demeanor, adroitly sidestepping the treacherous abyss of frustration. 8. Transmutation. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the action of changing or the state of being changed into another form. Sentence, the process of metamorphosing our behavioral patterns necessitates grappling with internal conflicts as we contend with the arduous task of altering habits that have become entrenched in the very fabric of our being. 9. Unwavering. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, steadfast, resolute, or not wavering. Sentence, in contemplating the enduring repercussions entailed by unwavering fealty to indoctrinated beliefs and biases, whose ramifications may precipitate behavioral challenges of multifaceted dimensions. 10. Unwittingly. Part of speech, adverb. Definition, without being aware, unintentionally. Sentence, consequently, engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response, akin to the arousal of latent forces within, rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. 11. Veracity. Part of speech, noun. Definition, accuracy or truthfulness. Sentence, the veracity of our apprehension of reality crystallizes within the framework of deeply ingrained conceptualizations about what is deemed authentic and tangible. 12. Visceral. Part of speech, adjective. Definition, relating to deep inward feelings rather than to the intellect. Sentence, consequently, engagements with subjects deemed deleterious evoke a profound visceral response, akin to the arousal of latent forces within, rendering us unwittingly susceptible to entities perceived as malevolent, analogous to capitulating to the sway of adverse spirits. 13. Warp Part of speech, noun Definition, the threads on a loom over and under which other threads, the weft, are passed to make cloth. Sentence, indoctrination, in its subtle machinations, intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces. 14. Weft. Part of speech, noun. Definition, the threads that run from side to side on a loom and are crossed by the warp. Sentence, indoctrination, in its subtle machinations, intricately interlaces myriad biases into the very warp and weft of our mental fabric, engendering negative predilections, inclinations, and convictions that, as previously expounded, can engender a sensation of being subjugated by maleficent forces.